Hi, my name is Dr. Janet Velasquez, and today we're going to talk about administering intravenous IV fluid therapy. As many of you already know, this type of therapy will require a provider with prescriptive authority, such as an APRN, a PA, MD, or a DO, to initiate the order, and then it will be carried out by you, the registered nurse. So, does this mean as registered nurses, do we need to know what each IV fluid is for? Absolutely. Remember, we are the last line of defense. Even if a provider orders an erroneous prescription, it is your responsibility to detect it and to correct it before it can reach our patients. So let's talk about the three main types of crystalloids you may be administering. You have isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. Isotonic solutions have an osmolarity between 275 and 295, which is similar to that of plasma. This type of fluid is distributed in the intravascular compartment without affecting the cell. These solutions are predominantly used to treat fluid volume deficit. Before we administer any solution, we need baselines, baseline vital sign, and a baseline head-to-toe assessment. So, what are some signs and symptoms of volume depletion? Well, they would include decreased skin turgor, cold, clammy skin, tachycardia, a weak, thready pulse, hypotension, tachypnea, flattened neck veins, and oliguria, to name a few. Some examples of isotonic solutions will include 0.9 sodium chloride, which is also called normal saline solution, lactators ringers, which is also called LR, and 5% dextrose in water, which is also called D5W. However, please take a special consideration with D5W. This fluid initially is a hypotonic fluid. However, once the dextrose is absorbed, the remaining saline and electrolytes will act as an isotonic solution. Hypotonic solutions have a lower osmolarity than plasma. This solution will move fluid from the intravascular space to the intracellular fluid, causing your small cell to begin to swell. If too much fluid is moved into the cell, remember, cellular lysis could occur. This type of solution is predominantly used to treat conditions that cause intracellular dehydration, such as diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, and hypernatremia. Some general nursing considerations that I would like for you to keep in mind when you administer these solutions are, again, we need baselines, vital signs, and a head-to-toe assessment. It is extremely important to remember signs and symptoms of someone who is experiencing intracellular dehydration. What do these include? Decreased level of consciousness, restlessness, weakness, disorientation, changes in respiratory patterns, such as Kuzmal's respirations. Laboratory data could indicate hyperglycemia, acidosis, to name a few. Please keep in mind a very special nursing consideration when you administer hypotonic solutions. This type of solution is contraindicated and should never be given to clients who, who are either at risk or have increased intracranial pressure, as this potential fluid shift could cause cerebral edema. Some examples of hypotonic solutions will include 0.45 sodium chloride, also called half normal saline, 0.33 sodium chloride, 0.225 sodium chloride, and 5% dextrose in water. D5W. Hypertonic solutions have a greater osmolarity than plasma, and this will help pull water out of the cell 
and into our intravascular compartment, which will cause the cell to begin to shrink. This type of solution is frequently used to treat hyponatremia, cerebral edema, and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, also called SIADH. Some nursing considerations that I would like for all of you to keep in mind is that this type of fluid should only really be administered in a specialized unit, such as an ICU or a CCU. Remember, this is a high acuity level patient. They require constant monitoring. As with any IV fluid, we will require a baseline assessment, vital signs, and your head to toe assessment. Patients who receive hypertonic solutions may begin to experience signs and symptoms of fluid overload or signs and symptoms of an electrolyte disbalance very, very quickly. So this is something that we must remain very vigilant to. Another nursing consideration that I want you to take with this patient is hypertonic solutions should be avoided in clients who have a renal or a cardiac history or a client who has severe intracellular dehydration like DKA. Examples of hypertonic solutions will include 3% sodium chloride, 5% sodium chloride, dextrose 5% and half normal saline, dextrose 5% and 0.9 sodium chloride, dextrose 5% and LR, lactated ringers, 10% dextrose and water. This will conclude our intravenous fluid administration series. I hope that you can take everything that you've learned here today and put it into practice. See you out there.